What's up YouTube? Welcome to this Coding for Cybersecurity series where we'll be copying and pasting code off the internet. Nah, I'm just joking. In this video, however, we'll be doing the first programming project from Cyber Academy that is coding a keylogger. All right, this is just gonna be part one of this Python project that is coding the first layer of the suggested architecture of the project by the man Grant himself, I think. What we're going to do is build up the base code for recording the keystrokes from the keyboard, of course, and saving these into a log file. After building this, we'll add a couple of features like getting the host information from the system, sending out the log file to an email address using the MIME and SMTP libraries, or sending it out to a server that catches web requests using a PowerShell one-liner. Once this is all done, we'll convert the script into an executable for Windows using the PI installer module. Seems pretty simple, right? Yeah, pretty. Let's get Okay, so I've basically finished the first part of the first layer, which is getting the key logger to log the keystrokes and save them in the text file. And now what I have to do is get it to get the system information, which is pretty easy since I've been playing with the rubber ducky, so I know how to do that. After I've collected the system information, I'm gonna have it send the log file to an email address, which I have to make, but I have a fake email address. I'll use that one. Let's go. Okay, so the code I used to check for system information is pretty different from the ones you're probably going to see online. Uh, if you check Grant's uh, code, he used specific functions to pick out the stuff he wanted to have, right? But I just use system info to just grab everything I need. And that way, if I'm trying to hack into the system, I can then use Windows Exploit Suggester and maybe get an exploit that could work on the target, right? So with this, I just used os.popopen to get the system information and then read it, then save it to the text file. And as you can see, our key logger right now, the log file, it's kind of empty. It's pretty empty. But if we run this, it's gonna populate the log file with the system info. And then for this, I used the find function to check if there's the line host name. If the word host name is at the top of this file, it's not gonna run this function again. But if it isn't, that's when it does do the system info function and then populates the top of the thing. But for now, you can see that it is loading and loading and loading and running and running. And apparently it didn't work. Okay, it's like 2 a.m. and I've done a tad bit more coding. I'm really tired now, even though I didn't really do much. I've just been reading a lot of documentation. The solution I opted for, instead of making a whole new Gmail account just for this and having to fill in the inbox with random emails, I just opted for a PowerShell one-liner to send up to send out the file via a web request. And so I will either be using Webhook or spin up a Linode server just to catch the request. Your email just doesn't work for me. So let me show you what I did. This is my PowerShell one-liner. I'm too lazy to go into OBS right now. PowerShell invoke web request, the URI. I'm using webhook right now. For now, I did not want to spin up a Linode server. And then method is a post and then in file is the log file. So at the top here, I have commented out my system information function so that you do not get my system information obviously because I'm about to show you the request 
once we run this. So if I press play here, as you can see, it's running and it's just gonna log my typing, my keystrokes and I'm typing with one hand. This is a trial and I am terrible at typing. Okay, so this is running. So let me just bring out the webbook page so that you see what it looks like in real time. And so it's empty right now, but once we press escape on the keyboard, you'll see the request come through. And I'm gonna do that right now, escape. It is done and here is the request. Let me just pull that up full screen. And here's the stuff I just typed. This is my typing with one hand. This is a trial and I am terrible at typing. All right, it's the morning of the second day. It's pretty cold here. It's snowing outside, but it's all good. I'm about to wrap it up and then maybe go chill in the snow for a bit. All I have to do is make this thing an executable. And then that's it for the first layer. And that'll wrap up the video. Let's get it. back and I've run into a roadblock, a bit of a roadblock. It's actually more than a bit of a roadblock though. Converting the script into an executable for Windows seems easy enough using Py installer. But after we do that, we lose a lot of the functionality of the script. It is doing everything from recording the keystrokes and logging them and getting the system information, but it is not sending out the web request using the PowerShell one-liner to our server where we can actually save the information we have gathered. My first assumption was that it was a problem with Windows Defender again, but I wasn't getting any notifications from Windows Defender, so maybe it actually wasn't. I have no idea at this point. After brainstorming a couple of solutions, I then decided to try and obfuscate the code using PyArmor to at least allow it to run the PowerShell command assuming that Windows Defender was the problem. To no surprise, it did not work. I then decided to go to Grant's video to see what solution he would have implemented. And to my surprise, he was facing the same problem, actually. I looked through the comments to see if someone had given a suggestion that could work for this problem since this video was recorded a couple of years ago. But uh, nothing was helpful. Most of them were the same saying, hey, you should use Pine Installer to convert it into a Windows executable. Bruv, I already did that and it didn't work. Well, it did, but not really. I found this one about PowerShell and I was like, I nah, no way I'm coding this in PowerShell. And I also found this one about how you should use a language that is not Python from the get-go to do this project, which I may be considering actually. Maybe. Hit me up in the comments if you'd like to see a version of this project in Go or C. C would be terrible. <laughs> anyway, yeah, hit me up. Apart from that, I then concluded that this was sort of the end of this project since I can find a fix for this for now. I might just see if I can put this on a rubber ducky and test it out that way. I have an 80 tiny 25. I don't know if you can see it on my desk. You probably can't, but I've been playing with that and it's a lot of fun. I might just try that out in another video. But until then, this is the end of this first part of this Python project. You can click on this video to watch the second one or here. I have no idea what it's going to be, but until then, peace, peace, <clears throat> peace.